Yes, yes, we are live. Welcome back. Today is a very important day, and there's a lot of things to know about today, honestly. Today is April 1st, so the first thing that you should have on your mind and should be in your brain for trading today is you cannot trust anything you read. Nothing you read can be trusted today. It is April Fool's Day. You may have noticed the great thumbnail and title. I know some of my best work, but uh, nothing. So be very careful today. Uh, everything you see produced, everything you see published, there's like an 80% chance it's BS. It's it's like deceptive clickbait, but we can let it go. It's April Fool's. It's prank day. Uh, Bitcoin and crypto does seem to be pranking us. There is uh, more going on though. I'm going to make a promise to you guys right now in this episode, nothing I say is going to be an April Fool's prank. I'm not going to deceive you. I'm not going to shovel you crap just so we get more views and stuff, not our style. I'm going to do my best to give you our market breakdown for the week. And this is a big week. April doesn't just start the mark, doesn't just mark a new month. It marks a new quarter. And in that spirit, we're going to take a look at charts on their quarterly, we're going to see how much progress they've made in this year and what we might be looking for into the rest of the month, May, even into June. So let's jump into it. We're, we're already behind schedule, man. If you could do this for me, smash the like button, please. It's very important to engage with the live stream. It helps us be more discovered in YouTube's algorithm. It really does do something. So if you haven't subscribed, if you haven't liked, if you can share out the stream to your friends, go for it. Also, shout out to our sponsor, Lux Algo, the number one indicator company. They also have some great scanners and other tools. And it, many people don't know this. They have hundreds of free indicators. It's not just a premium service. So check them out, tomcrown.io slash Lux Algo. Let's jump into the week update brought to you by our wonderful team at crownanalysis.com. Shout out to Mr. Poppy. We'll link him in the uh, video description after the live. So we have some great stuff to look at here. We have some really awesome metrics that we're going to update you on. I'm going to try to do this faster than usual. <laughs> faster than usual. Hopefully we're going to aim for like 10 minutes. Then we're going to jump into some charts and we're going to take some requests. So happy Monday. Let's jump into it, guys. February closed up. We have another green candle setting or at least tying Bitcoin's record for seven consecutive green candles in a row. This has only ever happened one time, one time in history. And it just happened again here in 2024. If we want to go back and see that, we'd have to go all the way back to 2012, over a decade ago. And back in 2012, we did get exactly seven candles in a row for a total of about 150%. So we've seen a bigger upside on these seven months, but this is the record. If April can close even a sliver green, Bitcoin for the first time in history will have closed eight consecutive monthly green candles. And that, that baby, that's, that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice with me. Be a nice bullish signal to the market and really reflect the confidence and desire of investors to get into Bitcoin and who could blame them best asset in human history. So uh, market does seem a little indecisive here, hanging out, whoa, hanging out around our all time high, not making those crazy giga pump gains that we have maybe expected going into this, uh, the having only potentially 19 days away. And I don't know if I updated you guys, I'm not going to go to Estonia. I'm going to be here for you guys. I asked the chats, you know, I went last year, great experience, but uh, this year, Estonia trip would have kind of tied me up from maybe the 17th until like the 25th of April. And that's almost certainly going to be, I might as well just throw it up, around the having. We're going to be here live streaming. For you, Don't say I never do nothing for you guys. I, I love you guys. I do anything for you. And I think this is, this is more important. So I've officially canceled. I'll be here. The whales listening to our pleas, adjusting their hash rates to deliver us an April 20th having 420. Remember guys, if the halving is on 420, all of our dreams will come true. Okay, maybe that wasn't really, maybe that was a little bit of an April Fool's prank. I've been saying that. But uh, April 19th looks like the targeted date and that 420 target is right on track. Right on track. I. It's just gonna be such a big thing. So what's going on? We're consolidating. We're not really moving. Little uh, 
takeaway from the good vibes we've had. We've had about two weeks, a little bit more, underneath our all-time highs set earlier in March. March, yeah. And uh, so basically, what, what are we looking at? We can call this consolidation. This is very typical after a move up uh, and generally occurs at key resistances. Bears and bulls are jockeying for position. Profit takers are jumping out. Weak hands are folding. Um, and stronger hands, more OG diamond hands, continue to stack Bitcoin like myself and hopefully all of you guys out there. Consolidations typically do break to the side that they started on or the direction they were going. They submit to the greater trend. So in this case, we would be looking for continuation to the upside. As I just said, we've had seven months of green. Only ever seen this once before. That is the trend, and the trend is your friend. Now, this does not mean April cannot see downside. You can even see on the screenshot here, we already have a little bit of red. Not concerning, but a little bit of red. Um, so let's look at uh, the bull case and the bear case here. The bull case is absolutely, the halving is coming in three weeks. No one can argue that. It is the scheduled inflation of Bitcoin that has been marked out since day zero. The inflation schedule, unlike uh, its its peers in the currency world that kind of just print whenever they want or whenever it's favorable for them. ETFs, interest remains pretty steady. I have this pulled up. Hopefully I can pull up the right one. Pretty steady here. No update on our inflows or net flows from Friday because this data lags. But by the end of the day, we will see at least one more data candle. Is it 28th? Yeah. At least one more. And while we have seen flows a little bit volatile here last week was red almost the entire week flipped to green and now those green candles did get smaller not exactly what i wanted to see but i'm going to wait for today i'm going to wait for this update and see if see if these can show us a little bit more bullishness the overall crypto market and bitcoin are vastly improved from last cycles absolutely agree Nearly all on-chain and sentiment data indicates a bullish market. You probably didn't need to read this. You probably felt that. Uh, but not excessively greedy or even overbought yet. And I agree. It is interesting. Bitcoin sitting around 71,000. And let me tell you, Bitcoin, 70K looks really good on you. You should wear that out more. Uh, but we aren't seeing the peak euphoria. And I've railed about this concept. I promise I won't rant too long. But it just is weird to me. As a creator, as someone who has been full-time making content in the crypto space for five years, and been investing longer than that, it just doesn't add up. Every other time that I've seen this kind of price action above all-time high, we have seen euphoria very quickly ignite and even explode. This price action, despite seven green consecutive months in a row, seems to be really tempering expectations. It seems to be keeping that euphoria and greed down. And that is the most bullish thing I can think of. Absolutely. The bear case, though. So let's look at both sides because you guys know I'm a permable. I'm always going to bet up on Bitcoin, but markets don't just go in one direction. So let's look at the bear case. And I think this is a great one. The U.S. Fed may not temper rates as early as markets are anticipating. This is looking very likely. The U.S. election could bring some heated discussion around cryptocurrencies, almost guaranteed at this point. We may not be really hearing it now, but come November, I have a feeling there is going to be a lot more, I, I hate to say it, anti-crypto rhetoric. I think it's going to be an anti kind of blame scapegoat thing. We'll find out. We'll find out in a few months. A small number of on-chain indicators show that the market is very near or into a range where cycle tops may occur. Fair enough. Meme coins are rallying in an unusual display of early market mania, and the U.S. dollar index is benefiting from weakness in competing currencies, leading to the dollar's rise. And yeah, I don't like that. We looked at that on Friday. The dollar looked to close the month very strong, and man, there may be pain ahead. We will find out. Uh, here's something I wanted to share with you guys. It's a new part of this article. By the way, we do publish. We have a market economy webpage, crownanalysis.com, and we have some very talented authors. If you're interested in being an author, jump in the Discord, let me know, and we'll get you hooked up if you're a writer. Oh, good. These are both working. So this is a really cool, uh, 
really cool part of this. We're going to keep this going. So promising, promising crypto narratives. We've been monitoring these and I am not a narrative trader. However, I'm a dynamic trader and I do acknowledge the value that these narratives can bring, even if I think it's only temporary. It's okay though. So here's the top ones that I think people should be looking at if they're potentially just looking to branch out, uh, diversify, or really just get into a new part of crypto, learn about something. So utility expansion on Bitcoin, like ordinals, stacks, runestone. Absolutely. L2, I think is going to be a big player this year on Bitcoin. It seems the lightning network is the, man, the white whale. The boy who cried wolf, it's it's here, it's been here, and it just doesn't seem to be functioning in the capacity needed for mass adoption. So I think other options are likely to kind of appear out of the woodwork this year, so be careful. But I think that we're going to see a rise and uh, an interest around that into the end of the year. Solana's maturing DeFi ecosystem and meme coins. This one is a no-brainer. This is where the hype and euphoria is from retail. However... However, Solana does seem to have its problems. And of course, the more a blockchain is used, the more the fees are driven up. And right now, my bet is most of that energy, most of that gain, I don't know, opportunity really centers around Solana having very little fees. It's very cheap to transact right now, but as blockchains become fuller or reach towards their capacity or their limitations, that's when fees increase. So that's going to be an interesting dynamic this year. We've talked about Solana a lot, kind of in uh, indirect ways, but I think it's still something to keep an eye on. Be careful with meme coins right now, though, even though this is a narrative. To my observation, I would say almost 100% of new meme coins on Solana are rugs and scams. I can't speak for 100%. Of course, there are ones out there, but at the moment, everyone knows how to make these coins. They know how to launch them, liquidity, whatever. And it's just, it's man, it's wild. For the first time ever on Reddit, I'm seeing posts about people saying, I just made my first meme coin, blah, 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 blah. And I, like, I've never seen anything like that. It is absolutely wild. I think it might cost only a few hundred dollars to launch basically like what looks like a, a realistic, maybe not rug project on Solana right now. The access and the information to do so are so widespread that it is just calling scammers names. Sucks to be a legitimate project out there. Man, that's always been true in crypto. So next one, Ethereum L2s and L3s, especially those that build around base with the Duncan, Duncan and whatever upgrade on Ethereum. We have seen fees drop considerably. And I was just making the argument that Solana's hype is probably right now centered around obviously price, but fees. Since Ethereum was able to kind of slash those fees on L2s, we may see that narrative build up. And of course, Coinbase's base doing very well, or in my opinion, probably a really good project. I don't believe there's even a coin. It's uh, kind of in the spirit of crypto. OG projects, of course, you'll love this one, like Litecoin and Doge that might see institutional interest. Of course, we have Elon potentially adding Doge as a payment or something on Twitter, a great narrative. Litecoin has seen some love lately. My prediction is that those two will get an ETF before many of the coins that you would expect. In fact, I would argue that Doge or Litecoin is likely the next one to get an ETF. I'm not going to go into why. You're welcome to argue in the chat, but uh, something tells me. Emerging L1s like SEI that have VC investors and interest. This does seem to be a narrative right now, not one that I would trust or invest in, but man, we have seen some of those do really well. Meme coins with utility. Well, all right, Poppy, fair enough. Uh, for example, if Elon adopts Doge on Twitter, sure. I also don't count Doge as a meme coin. Story for another time. GameFi or NFT related gaming. This is really the golden goose that I think we're all waiting for. We're all really weirdly similar. Everyone out there, we might come from different places and different backgrounds, but at the end of the day, we, we kind of all have very similar thoughts. And I think we're all waiting for gaming. Uh, gaming literally is the reason that Ethereum exists. Vitalik Burden made Ethereum in response to something that happened in World of Warcraft. So it's coming. It's coming, I don't know when, probably once they start making good games. That's my opinion. Web3 and crypto digital art, crypto punks, Xcopy, Beeple, many others. We'll find out. Or I, I still struggle with this. Are any of the NFTs that people bought in like 2021, are, are any of them in profit? I think Pudgy Penguins might be, 
But that is a very small group. I'm sure there are others, but it is wild. NFT somehow performing worse, at least to my observation, than we've seen coins perform post their first cycle. I don't know. It seems like it is hard to kind of long-term hold any of them. Argue with me. Bring it. We're almost done with this. Uh, So we have a bunch of other metrics that we love looking at. Supply on exchange, really not signaling anything. Continues to dwindle. Not a huge change from Friday, but this is going to be one of the greatest or most dependable top signals, in my opinion, when we see supply start to return to exchanges. Not the day it happens, but as it increases, we have seen cycle tops come in very predictably. I think this is a great thing to cover. Uh, Nupal, net unrealized profit and loss right around where it was Friday. Not a big update there. It is approaching historically where cycle tops would be, but it is also indicating not quite yet. So I like that. Minor position index on the floor. Miners at peak profitability right now. You know, this is going to be a very interesting kind of environment for the having. Miners typically sell Bitcoin pre-having in anticipation of the having. So basically for those who aren't familiar with it, which is probably no one here, but you never know. We have new viewers all the time. The having is only only directly influencing the minor reward or the inflation of the Bitcoin supply. It does not change your holdings. No, you're not going to lose half your Bitcoin on April 20th. That's not how any of this works. But what will happen is every successfully mined block going forward after will reward the miner with half the amount of Bitcoin it did in the four years previous. So typically miners sell to buy more efficient, stronger hardware in anticipation for the lower profitability for them. This is different though. Not only have we seen ordinals really bolster their profits throughout the bear market, we are seeing like peak profitability right now. It is very, very interesting. Something kind of different dynamically, which maybe we should be used to now. Almost everything about this cycle doesn't seem to be like the previous ones. And uh, this is uh, this is wild. This is wild. Miners may not need to sell at the same capacities they have it, have in the past. And what that means for this cycle is... I mean, your dreams, man, whatever, whatever you can dream. I don't know. Nobody knows. Uh, Net flows again, actually kind of coming into the positive territory, the bearish territory for the first time since we've looked at these metrics above zero or above Bitcoin leaving exchanges, meaning net, there are some being deposited slowly over the course of the last few days. This does give us a signal of short-term to mid-term selling pressure. On top of that, I don't think this was mentioned yet, but I think it is important. We do have tax season coming. I know a lot of us don't like to think about taxes. The Bitcoin ideology is very kind of anti-tax anyway, but uh, we do have taxes coming in the US and that does have percussion, repercussions. It doesn't necessarily guarantee that everything will drop, but what it does guarantee is that there are going to be people who need to sell assets, not just Bitcoin or cryptos, in order to cover their tax burden. April 15th is the deadline. And so we may expect kind of more intense selling pressure into the 15th. If we don't, that will likely be an incredibly bullish sign. We got two weeks. Hopefully you guys out there are uh, already prepared, already on top of your tax stuff. We do have a good tax video we did with a CPA that uh, specializes in crypto last year. It is on the channel. You should check that out after the live. You should also check out our playlist of free educational content. It is the number one free trading course on YouTube on this channel. And we have two more videos actually ready to be published. So keep your eyes peeled. We'll probably publish the, the next one Tuesday. Pi cycle indicator, something we like to watch as It's right about where it was in December of 22 and still is. No update here for you, but uh, I'm watching it. I'm watching it. It's going to be interesting. A small move up will put it into the previous kind of bullish run, blow off top coming territory, but we're not quite there yet. MR, MVR, let's see MVR. Market cap to realize cap. In recent weeks, MVRV continued its consolidation 20% to 30%. 
kind of like price, just consolidating below key rejection levels, suggesting though that there is room for this bull market to continue. And that's also in line with the other metrics that we've looked at today. They're all kind of hovering just below, just below with the gap, meaning they have like another leg up before they actually are battling that trend. To me, that suggests continuation. The dollar, we're almost done. Keep smashing the likes and subscribes. The, fa the more you like and the more you subscribe, the faster we get through. You're like, well, I, w I don't want you to get through it fast, so I won't. Fair enough. Well played, sir. The dollar continues to see appreciation. The dollar was looking pretty bad at one point uh, in the last few months. It has regained some of, that, some of that strength. And the close on the month, not where we wanted it. Bullish engulf suggesting stronger more continuation for the dollar, not great for equities, crypto, and really anything other than the dollar. Uh, they tend to lose value as the dollar gains value or gains power against its other currencies, which is weird because honestly, a dollar doesn't seem to be doing well. It's doing better. Un un undeniably, you can't even argue otherwise. Dollar is doing better than other major currencies, but has its own issues here. Should be a very interesting month. Market sentiment has recovered versus the past week after cooling off some through March. I think this is a good thing. Uh, it's going to skip past that. Other data. I love this one. The Coinbase app ranking is up slightly, about 40 points to position 248 globally and up a few positions to 14 on the finance apps. That's a bullish trend. We have seen the Coinbase app reach the number one slot virtually at, I don't know, every bull run that we've had that app ranking and that Coinbase has been ranked in. So another signal of the top is likely not in, more to come. Google Trends continue to grind its way up, but still very much not at peak bull market levels. Not high enough to suggest a cycle top yet. It's good. Dominance has not moved. We will look at this chart in the episode. We'll look at this more in depth. Going to be a really big predictor for the rest of the year, especially with what's been going on. Just this screenshot, you can see these lows coming up and 54.1% being tapped over and over and over again. This really does look like it wants to break out to the upside, which would have kind of interesting complications. To wrap up here, this is our week ahead. We have some big numbers coming in. S&P US manufacturing, ISM manufacturing, prices, German CPI, jolt job openings. We have Chirpao joining us on Wednesday. We'll have to find out where he's speaking. That is not an FOMC, but if it's anything like our Chirpao last week, I'm in. Kai, the guy who interviewed him, my favorite interviewer now. Uh, it seems like Chirpao is on some kind of world tour at the moment. He's a bit of a celebrity. We'll find out. I just learned this this morning. They speak. And so tune in Wednesday. We have crude oil uh, manufacturing, global manufacturing, lots of very important numbers, lots of very important data to the Fed, to Chirpao. It is unfortunate that he will never see this data because I don't know. Apparently he's data blind. Can't ever see it, even if he has it. Thursday, kind of some global things going on. Um, looks like in Asia, there's some kind of Ming festival initial jobless claims, and then unemployment, non-farm payroll, average hourly earnings, all things that are important to the Fed, to the interest rates, etc. All right, I'm putting the link to this article on crownanalysis.com in the chat. Boom. You can check it out after the live. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I did want to shout out to Poppy for doing this awesome work. Highly recommend you read these articles. They're great little wrap-ups. Great little uh, great little tidbits for getting you in, in the day. Wait a minute. There we go. Close enough. Mr. Poppy. Check him out. Great dude. Friend of this channel. I'll put his link in the chat. There it is. I'll put it in the, uh, into the video description at the end. There it is. Okay. We are through that. Through that. Anybody else have flies coming back? Get out of here. Uh, coming back, it's warm out and flies. Apparently, I live in the middle of nowhere on farm, so there's lots of them. But this one just keeps landing on my light and it's bothering me. This would have been relevant to earlier, so let's wrap this up. The CME Fed watch tool, we do see about a 96% chance of no interest rate hike into May. 
it seems that expectations of this interest hike keep getting pushed back, and that is in alignment with what Sher Pao has been saying. His rhetoric has very much been, it is not the time right now. We are monitoring the data, and as it comes in, we will you know, adjust this and, and figure out if it's needed, but he keeps saying that it is higher for longer, basically. Uh, 51% chance it looks like June, July. Although there's, yeah, of uh, of being lessened down only by two, 25 BPS, and that continues out into the year, but these numbers are so dynamic, it keeps changing. People were dead set on a March cut, and now well, we didn't get one, but now they're looking for less cuts in the year. We were looking for five, now we're looking for three. This story is going to continue to kind of evolve and change, I think, throughout the year. It's going to be interesting. We may not get one until Q4. That is my kind of hunch here. Uh, okay. Is that it? I think that's it. Nice. We got through that. Nice. Let's close this. Boom. Pull up the chart. You got the BLX. Let's take a look at the corn. We're going to take a look at the corn. First, let's see who's here. That's a good idea. We are, man, yeah, 30 minutes in. That took longer than I expected, as it always does, but... We will live. We will go on. Pulling up the chats. If you are watching this stream anywhere but YouTube, join us on YouTube.com slash Tom Crown. We've got hundreds of viewers. Come join the community, the fam over here. Though I do appreciate you watching on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, whatever. Uh, if you're here, join the Discord. Definitely free. Smash the likes. Let me see. Check out our sponsor, Lux Algo. Um, what you should do is look at the video description on the main stream. We do have many links available sign up with any of them and you will get exclusive vip access in our discord for free so it's a good deal you're gonna be using these things anyway all right shills out of the way let me see who is here what's up switch this over to the main the main stream Light up. done done and done we're gonna look at corn first but what are you guys looking at what are you guys looking at if you're here today, let me know. I see Andrew, and Angel Cash, Chris Bearden, Chris Zeno, Decipher, Donkey Dan, Heaven Peck, shout out Key Man, shout out Mike Bennett, always over here, love you brother. Shout out Satoshi Nakamoto, shout out The Revenant. Coming on over to the other list, we got Asmodeus Acolyte, Bad Baptist, my guy. How you doing brother? Happy Monday. Bio Man, Brendan. Cactus Leo, Carlos E, Das Peach, Frosted Flakes, GT Nuts, Janix, Conan Laverty, Heat Bit Army, Lazarus Hand, Lemon GF, Loading Name, Mark Sanji, Max Santana, Mr. Poppy, there he is. There he is, the author himself. Feel free to uh to like throw your links out there, Pop. Oh no, Y2K, Positive Flow, Randul Thane, Randy Greer, Save with Crypto, Steven Dupe, Stymie Sneerty, Positive Flow, what's up, brother? TD Tesla. No N. Ooh. Mickel Student. Marcelo Rodriguez. We got a lot of new ones. People are jumping in. Say hi. What's up? Up and run. Tillin McPooch, my friend, my guy. The JD Club. Pickle. Venom Hex. Penny Ways. Normie. David. Coinshick is here. Another one of our wonderful authors on crownanalysis.com. I would say the prettiest. Though, honestly, Poppy, pretty, pretty man. It's a, it's a contest. Maybe we'll have a vote at some point handsome handsome all right not calling it a bull run until one of your new wallets or exchanges is hacked well you know i in reality that that tends to happen at the bear market bottoms like think about 2022 everything collapsed in november all at the same time at the pico bottom what do you think about maker maker's been making moves hacks are down lately bearish on hacks i agree Check out Anchor. Go check out Anchor. What's up, Canvas Videos? Blessings to you, Malik. Hope you had a great Easter, a great long weekend, everybody. Glad to see you back. Glad to uh, have you here on a Monday. What else are we looking at? Pow Pow, Pickle, seven green monthly candles in a row. Yes. Yes. Here every day with you. Hell yeah. Muy guapo. Si. Si, senor. Render. We can look at Render. People are looking at render, I guess. Back to work. See you later, brother. Good to, good to see you stopping in. What do you think about green Bitcoin? Key man, green Bitcoin sounds like a like vaporware. 
What is green green Bitcoin? Is it just like a proof of work Bitcoin or proof of stake Bitcoin? Pass. We got enough of those. Bear market's coming now, says Crypto Soul. Uh oh. Uh oh. You're thinking there'll actually be a big dip now, but we're headed to the moon shortly. I mean, either way, no matter what happens at this point, this is a, this is my honest opinion. No matter what happens, there is only opportunity from here on out. I mean, here on out, meaning maybe the next year, year plus. Anything, any downside, even if we retrace 50%, that's just opportunity. That's it. The deeper it goes, the bigger the opportunity. People said, I'm sure people are saying, oh man, I should have bought a 30K. Now that's at 68, but they had plenty of time to buy pre 30K. It's only opportunity. This is not a get rich quick scheme. That's the important takeaway. This is a get rich scheme. Just not quick, unfortunately. Happens every pre-having. We'll see. I am so skeptical of the it happens every time rhetoric. Can we look at Chuck? What is Chuck? Live peer looks good. Live, Dude, live peer? Not like a, like a 10-year-old coin or am I thinking of something different? Made 100 bucks. Nice. KFC nutrients. Nice. What are your secret herbs and spices? KFC nutrients. Fabio, do I know Tezos? I have some Tezos. Not my favorite project, but uh, yeah, I got some some XTZ. Do you use Market Cipher B? Absolutely, me. Love Market Cipher. Love Market Cipher. Love Lux Algo. Yin and Yang. Have I seen Dogecoin was going up in the past week? Of course. Of course. Dogecoin uh, making that run back to 25 cents. Who look at Tia? Probably. Probably Sagis. This time is different. I know, and I'm so worried. I'm so afraid of saying that. I don't like it. I don't like it. That has been just savage every time I've heard it said, but it does. It is. I don't know. Maybe it's going to be savage again. I love Cervezas. Heck yeah. Heck yeah, bro. All right. Let's look at the month at the quarterlies. Quarterly TA. This is big boy time frame. Big boy time frame. Bitcoin closed its higher list. Higher list. That's a word. Uh, Bitcoin closed its highest quarterly candle in the history of bitcoin at 71.3k this is higher than of course october 21 new all-time high closed at a new all-time high you can even see which is interesting here the the quarterly is giving a little different picture right so in 2021 we had 65k about six months of gibberish and then 69,000 before entering the bear market if you look at the quarterly quarterly never closed higher the quarterly really suggests that that 65K was the top, was the bull market high, cycle high. This, just a wick, did not sustain price. We entered the bear market. Closing up here is an inarguable bullish signal to the market. Great quarterly close. We did have a, a little bit of worry here when we go down to the month that we weren't really going to close an all-time high on the month, etc. But on the quarter, all we needed was 58.8. In fact, we could trade back down to 58.8 and it wouldn't be a big deal here in April, May, or June. That in fact, would be a very, very nice pullback. I would actually enjoy that. Might not be exciting, but it was very nice. Closing at the highest point, looking good. Up, oh, I turned my prices off. Crap, here we go. Looking good. I'm Check out it. Renda. We're not really going to have much in the way of indicators on the quarterly, at least not on Coinbase's history. There's not enough not enough history for the candles. We can look at BLXN maybe. Actually, let's see. Let's see. Uh, no, nah, I don't have my indicators on. Screw it. So great, strong quarterly close. Let's go down to the month because we also closed the month. We closed the quarter. We closed the month. Let's look at the month. In agreement with the quarter, the month closed at all time highs. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Of course, looking down, we have different targets. We can say 61.3 was the highest monthly close that was also conveniently marches open just below, just below, conveniently, giving us a great spot if we are looking for downside, whether it's pre having, post having, whatever. If we're looking for downside or uh, retracement in this quarter, this is a great place to look. 58.8 to 61.3. Great place to look. This is where I would begin kind of wading back in, wading into the DCA game. 
In fact, I'll put my money where my mouth is. I'll, I'll place some orders. Uh, I like scaling in. I like limit orders. I like to ladder them, meaning for the people not so aware, I might put a limit order here. We'll say uh, 0.1 Bitcoin or something. Then I might look to put another limit order down here in like the 45s for like 0.2 Bitcoin. And basically, as price goes down, those orders are bigger. That's the easiest takeaway from this. It's been a successful strategy for me. Uh, worst case scenario is none of them fill. And if you're worried about that, that means you probably should be DCAing. Probably should be just be dedicated cost averaging, dollar cost averaging, whatever you want to call it. Uh, do The number one biggest trick hack to trading is to do anything you can to remove emotion. And if that means DCA, that means DCA. All the month money flow still trending up, but looking a little heavy, a little bit kind of VWAP looking like May, June, July of 23 down here. That wouldn't be, I really don't want this to happen, but that doesn't matter to the reality. Um, don't want this to happen. But this would be not out of the realm of, of ridiculousness. Where, where are my bar patterns, man? I swear they change stuff on this all the time. Bar patterns. So if we were to have an exact repeat of that price action, it might look something like this. Something like this. That'd be pretty good. Not really calling for it, but just showing you on the month, the VWAP showing kind of the similar pattern here. It did have a higher high, which is going to be a little bit more bullish. But even with this little rollover to negative, we get something like this. That might line up with what we've seen in previous cycles, meaning through the summer, if you haven't been around for many years in crypto, the summer tends to be boring. Tends to be boring. If you remember last year, we had six months in this range from 31 to like 25, six months there. That would be very similar. Uh, even back here, right? Nah, I guess in 2020, not really. 2020 was going up. Uh, summer of 21, really range bound. This is hopefully not going to happen this summer. I'm praying for a spicy summer, though. I will take the time to vacation. I will, I will relax if we get nothing. But uh, that might be what it looks like. Would line up with what we've seen in the past. Really, that accumulation above the previous all-time high would not be bad at all. It'd be pretty good. Let's pray it doesn't happen. On the month... We got in February on this channel, we shared this with you, you probably didn't hear it anywhere else, the most bullish possible Ichimoku cloud indicator or signal. We got it in February, closed strong, and we haven't looked back. Um, according to the same indicator, 50K is about the lowest we can go to stay in our trend. Every other time we've gotten this, we've basically gone on to rally extremely. So that's, that's lining up. I didn't actually mean to pull up Ichi. I meant to pull up moving averages. Where are we? Hmm, that's actually cool. Monthly, according to Lux Algo, our green candles here defining a, an uptrend has not been broken yet. We haven't seen any indecision on the monthly time frame. I do like this indicator. It just gets a little visual for me while I'm streaming. I use it more off the camera, honestly. <sighs> Moving averages. I don't know why it never saves mine. Multiple. Let me add this quick. It's going to be important. If we're not moving straight up, moving averages become much more important. Let's see if this works. What is this one? Uh, nope. I had one that I always used. You know what? I know where I can find it. Here we are. God, I'm making my job hard. Okay, copy. Drop. There it is. Here we go. Done. Maybe. Okay. Cool, cool. On the month, we got our 20 all the way down here. Just crossed. Actually, I didn't see this. Just crossed golden bullishly in March with the 50. And that's all the way down in the 33K zone. That might make you uncomfortable. Doesn't mean price is going there, but interesting we're gonna watch these move as we zoom down i thought there was actually one that was much closer to price the 20 is on there maybe it's on the week let's go down to the week we did also just start a new week there's a lot of new beginnings in april maybe fitting for the holiday uh weekly close and monthly close right at the same spot 71 three 
uh, on the week, let's see where we might be looking. Short-term price action, we could see price move to 67.2. This could be a very nice entry. In fact, just looking at this, I'm going to throw a long position down. Boom. This is such a classy trade. Stop loss going to be hard. Not really sure where to place it, so I'm just going to reverse this. Targeting 71.3. Where do we get like a two and a half? Something like this. 65.5 stop entry at 67.2. Remember, none of this is financial advice. I'm just sharing my analysis I would do anyway. With or without people here. But please, I'm not qualified to give financial advice. I'm not certified. Don't think I'm giving you financial advice. 20 weekly moving up to 50.5K. I could have sworn that this was closer. Something seems weird about these band, uh, moving averages. Maybe not. Maybe not. Nothing's weird about them. Weekly kind of riding the top of the Bollinger Band on the weekly. That might seem uncomfortable, but that is the price action that we see when this market is bullish. You go back to the previous cycles and you'll see it virtually all the way up all the way up, riding that top band, eventually giving it up, falling down. And it doesn't just happen in bull markets. It really just happens on any kind of explosive rally back here in 2019, not a bull market, but you rode the top of that band all the way up till you didn't, right? Same thing happened back here in the entirety of the 2015, 16 to 17 bull run. Ride that top band, return to the 20, ride it, return to the 20. This is beautiful price action. I hope we get something similar to this. If we did, that would then <laughs> that would then suggest, though, that 50K mark in play. As more time goes on, the longer we trade sideways, the higher that goes. But it does give us some kind of compass, some kind of guide. Very simple, very easy for anyone to understand. That was interesting back here. All right. This is what I wanted. Okay, we got the long, we got the weak. Let's look at our indicators here. RSI is beautifully overbought. I love it. Keep that bullish energy, higher highs, removing the bearish bear div argument. Keep it overbought. Overbought is bullish, baby. Weekly here. Money flow is still in good condition, but not in the kind of giant boner trend it was in. Showing maybe some weakness here. Really needs to hold its lows. I would say that going lower this week than 66.3 probably going to lead us to a longer sideways consolidation. Right now, the daily, we retook the 20 daily moving average right now on this sell-off. We are right back to it. Holding this low today, not filling our long, probably the more bullish, <laughs> the more bullish setup for the rest of the week. Uh, that was a pretty harsh rejection at least right now. The price to beat today going to be 69.6 on the day. So six hours to go, closing above there, will remove the bearish engulfing daily that has painted. I'm happy, honestly, of any close above the 20. Any close above this white line. Pretty happy with it. Um, yeah. On the day. Money flow still strong. Higher highs, higher lows. These trigger waves are getting a little sketchy too. I think we're going to see some pretty nice volatility, some pretty strong volatility this week. That's kind of what I'm reading out of this. Daily done. I think the day's low is, is in or very close to in. Go down to low time frames. Then we're going to turn it back to the chat. Look at some random charts. Look at some altcoins, whatever you guys want to look at. Let me take a peek at these real low time frames. Going down to the one minute here. Potential little bottoming going on on the one minute. Uh, there is resistance to get back above, so that's not the most exciting thing. In fact, you're really close to your previous low, but that is starting to look like something that's going to find a retracement, maybe like this. You got a low, a lower low, higher low. You got like a one, two, three bottom. Look for the retracement. Take a look at this. Yeah, market side for B, very indecisive. RSI remaining low on the one minute, not the most bullish thing. That's okay. Five. 
A little downward momentum on the five. You can see bull div on your lows here. Wouldn't really get too excited about bull div on a five minute, but RSI setting higher lows while price hits lower lows. We have what looks like to me a three, one, two, three bottom, triangular bottom, whatever you want to call it. Combined with this, I think that's good enough confluence for me to make some kind of upward call for today. Let me see. Take this to here. That's pretty. 70.1. That would not be bad. That'd be pretty slick. Almost. Almost done, fam. Keep the hype going. Keep the likes up. I see people subscribe and I'll shout you out in just a minute. Just want to wrap up my thoughts here for the corn. And we're about to jump into some alts and such. Some requests. 15 minute mirrors that same five minute kind of kind of heaviness. It's not light on its feet. It's feeling sluggish. 30 minute as well. 30 minute wants that retracement though. That divergence is visible from the one minute all the way to the 30 minute right now. Lower low in price, higher low in RSI. 45. 30 was looking saggy along with the lower time frames, and I was thinking it's going to roll over, but the 45 kind of fighting here. Fighting for it, giving us more upside. More upside signals. Crappy one hour close. Not a lot on the hour. See that momentum into the two hour, but it is slowing. Yeah. Kind of ugly. Not going to lie, kind of ugly. Not what I was expecting today. Not what I was expecting. What do you guys think about this? Do you think this is the likely thing to happen over the next six hours? Or do you think we're going lower? I'm going to leave this up, pulling up the chat. It's time to get some engagement. Time to take some... Uh, Time to take some requests, and I did see, and I do see, the render. Did render do a big move? We'll find out. What's up, Cobus Jackson? Be in the chat, hitting that subscribe button. Be like Cobus. Join our fam. Nadim Bucks, Hazik Uzar, Solomon Ali, Max Hoba, Nikanji. That's a cool name. John Foster Crypto, $10 super chat. Thank you, man. Check out render. We'll pull up render right now. We'll pull it up. We'll do it next just for you. And there's actually a few people who wanted to look at it. So make this watermark a little more apparent. I don't know if you can see it. Visit Nepal. All right. I'll visit Nepal just because you were your username. What's up, Lucas? Clarence Jones, a name in a language I cannot pronounce. Welcome, friend. You are welcome. Peter Imona, Niraj Belwal, CZQ Quijada, 3D Metric Gmail. What's up, brother? Abid Hassan, Daniel Fuch, liked by everyone. Everybody likes that guy. I like that guy. Xing Zheng, Jack Harrison liked our stream over on Facebook. What's up, Jack, if you're still watching? And I'm sure many others to come. Keep those subscribe buttons, like buttons. Keep them moving. Share the stream if you got it. And join the Discord. All right, got the chats up. Who's here? Who's here? What are you looking at? Mike Bennett wants to look at DGen, and that's his first super chat. Mike Bennett, I am honored to be the recipient of your first super chat. We'll, uh, we'll look at DJ, whatever that is. What's up, Jennifer? How you doing, Jen? Edward, sun's out, guns out. True, but the sun is not really out here. It's a weird day. It's just hot in my house. Tim Simpson thinks it's going to dump the 65K. That's not a big move. That could definitely happen. Uh-oh. He's, he's indirectly saying that this position's going to get wrecked. Womp womp. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. I think we have some kind of shorter term reversal, though. Two hours on this four hour. I'm looking for this. I'm looking for this, but at the same time, this is where the entry. That's the entry. So, me too. I'm also expecting some more downside. Pepe, Bitcoin analysis, Salmon. I just did a bunch. DVR is enabled. You can check it out. It's about to blow to 80K. Oh, I like that. All right, I'll go with that. What's up, Zoltan? Can I look at GTAI? What is that? Does anybody else know what GTAI is? 66 to 75K, I like that. Bajoran says Bitcoin's going to zero, but it was a typo. He meant is going to add a zero. 
to its price. And I agree. What a smart lad. Smart lad. What's up, Gold Dragon? Super crypto ETF application in progress. Are you applying? 66 fair value gap, then 75. I can see that. That's where the trade's in alignment with. Let's beat up that dollar. We'll look at the dollar after render. Uh, Degen, I guess. Do I have a Degen chart? I don't think I don't. We'll see. We'll see if there even is Degen chart. But we are going to look at render. We're going to look at render. Let's set this one up just to Degen. Degen. Are you a Degen? Oh, yeah, you're a Degen. Not a lot of history there, my friend. Not a lot of history. You know what that means, Mike? You know what that means? I guess there's only like a few hours, a few days of trading. We need to render first, though. Let's zoom her out. Let's zoom her out. What else are you guys looking at? DGB. Of course you are, Sharknado. Of course you are. Did it move? Let's see. What alerts did I get? Since, uh, since Friday. DJT, Donald Trump. All right, we're going to look at, we'll look at Digibyte as well. I got the alert. Bitcoin Cash, got the alert. Uh, Stacks, new all-time high. Gold, new all-time high. Litecoin hit 110. I think it's chilling right now. Ondo hit a dollar. I think that's where our TA was looking. Raven coins up. Whiff, whiff, did it hit five bucks yet? That's our target. Uh, Dogecoin, yes, yes. FBTC. All right, we got a lot to look at. I'm going to look at Render first. Double top at 75K. All day, baby. Thoughts on VSG? I don't know what that is. What are your thoughts on VSG, uh, Sag? I don't know. Bitcoin will Bitcoin will go to Tom one million before it goes to zero. I agree. Bitcoin will go to a million. I don't think it will ever go to zero. I don't believe it will ever go to zero. But you you can. I don't know. Link is Link moving? Link was moving. I never watched the Tau chart. Says Blender guy. That is inaccurate. I never watch it. We've, we've brought it up many times. Pith. We look, eh, we might be able to look at Pith. Pepe, Goldfinch, PYR. Bitcoin cash having. Yes. And Bitcoin cash has had some big moves. Let me look at a render here quick. Let me look at the old render. Closed the quarter at 10.68. Opened at 4.50. Five bucks would be such a good entry. But it did close. It broke its all-time high. It closed a quarter, closed a month, closed a week, whatever. At the highest point, I'm looking for further upside on render. Its previous all-time high was $8. Let's see what that looks like as we go in a little bit here. Great target. It's actually a great target. High, highest monthly close, good end of the week. $8 was its previous all-time high. It did not back test it on a week. So we had resistance, previous all time high resistance. It broke it. It's uh, now not really moved for three weeks, but don't worry. I wouldn't worry yet. A back test of the all time high, the previous all time high, eight bucks. This could be a really nice trade. Rarely in crypto do you get this though. When it comes, it can be a gift. I may look to take a position on render at eight. First uh, stop loss, that does get tricky. March 4th low, just under $6. I think it's a logical spot. If that low breaks, this chart does not look good anymore. I think the upside target, likely looking at like 20, 25. Our moon math, of course, delivers us much farther. Our 1618 extension, all the way up at $50. So this could be done like this as well. And that gives you a lot more room to kind of pull that down. You can actually get a 10 to one risk to reward. Meaning if you took this trade 10 times, you'd only have to win once to break even. Dang, you have to stop under $3 and aim for 50. This is crypto, baby. I think that is uh, only for a spot position, obviously, but I think that's a good play. Weekly RSI climbing up, good, good. Momentum up, also good. Moving averages are kind of reaching back to that previous all-time high. When they get there, we may see price collide with them. That does happen pretty commonly. End of the day. Yeah, we already had a we already had trades placed there at the all-time high. Of course we did. Of course we did. 
some pretty ugly bearish divergence here on the way up, which is interesting. It's very common in crypto to see, but RSI still hasn't really caught any bids, keeps dropping lower and lower. Now price hasn't, but on the day that does to me look in alignment with a retest of the previous high at eight bucks. It snaked us here on the way up at $5. I'd still like that better, but it did not fill us. Came pretty close. Let's look for that five eight dollar mark. I like this. I'm gonna set an alert for it. Back test of eight bucks. I might uh I might be doing a position myself. Render definitely looking good, and I like that it's not just up and we're looking at it. I hate looking at charts where it's just a giant green candle on the day and it's like Tom, look at this. And it's like, yeah, dude, it's up 100% today. The only thing you can do is, is take profit. Like it's up 100% today. Going long here is silly. That's most of the requests on this channel, in all honesty. I get it though. Not making fun of you. Man, that'd be a clean back test. This is what I'm looking for. Could be buttes. Keep your eyes peeled on render. $8 might be coming pretty soon. Let's look at DGen for uh, Mr. Mike Bennett. Has anyone else heard of this? Mike Bennett's here all the time, so I'll look at whatever. Look at whatever for him. We got a lot of other charts too, and I definitely want to know what you guys are paying attention to because that is important. DGen does not have lots of history, so we don't have a lot to work with. It closed its month and I guess its quarter though. It wasn't around the whole quarter. At 5.6 cents. It's now trading down to 4.2, 4.7. Yes, we can throw a fib, throw a fib on it, do something like this. We can mark out our retracements. We can say our 0.5, right down here, 2.26, our 6.18 at 2.1 or 2 cents. That might not be bad. Might be a good entry. What's up, Clip Hub? I see you, bro. Prakish Lolo Mabo, Rajesh Mola. MHD Ihan Isan. I see you guys. Appreciate you subscribing. Appreciate you joining our fam. Uh, this is really all we can do with it. We leave this month and we say, all right, there's likely resistance at 5.6 cents. We can look down and say, here are our retracements. These can be great. You know, these can be the levels we look for. But what we're really going to want to see is when we go off the month, is price or has price interacted with these levels? And if they have, or if it has, then which ones look strong? We'll find out. On the week, it looks exactly the same as the quarter. That's what you get when you don't have lots of history to play with. Daily. No, I don't know. Nothing. Really, no, nothing here. I, I can't BS you. Um, these FIB levels don't look like they're interacting with price. I'm going to get rid of it. We can look to the day and say 1.8. 1.8 cents down to 1.7. is like the only support you have. This is your only resistance. This is your only support. So maybe you could look to, I don't know. <laughs> you could look for this. You could look to short at the top. Not going to be a lot else to do with this, my friend. I'm sorry. What's up, Salmon? What's up, brother? Sam. Good good names. Good names. Our side coming down. Lows aren't. You have bull div there, but you're also battling bearish div. I want to give you, I want to leave you with something. There just isn't. There isn't. There you are. This is all I can, this is all I can give you, Mike. There it is. I'll set an alert for this high breaking. If this high breaks, I'd probably be looking for like 10 cents. Nice round number above six. That's it. Good luck. Good luck to you and anyone who enters into the DGen coin. Look at dollar fast. Dollar wrapped up a, a good monthly or a good quarter. I think it was a strong monthly, but kind of a not quite as strong quarter. Uh, last quarter of last year dropped us very, very spookily. Bearish engulfed. Bulls were able to buy up the bids here. They pushed price back, but were unable to bring it back to 1061. The previous quarter's open. Now we may see that coming up in this quarter. But this is not the strongest. If we had had a really strong response, we would have seen this close higher or at least trade higher intra quarter, which it did not. Which it did not. Little bit of sluggishness, a little bit of soft on that quarter. 
going down to the month. You did have a strong January bullish in golf that month, and it does seem to kind of just be floating back up to that 106. Looking at the quarters and especially how March closed after trading bearish engulfed and in the last, I would say, week of the uh, month, bulls came in, pushed price up into a beautiful hammer candle on the monthly. To me, this is suggesting continuation back to here. I don't want it to be true, but it is. Market Cypher B actually looks really crazy on the month too. Wow. I think Market Cypher B thinks uh, the dollar is a little bully right here. Down to the week. Again, strength on the lower time frames. Targeting 106, 2 to 1066. Looking very likely here. Remember, as the dollar increases or as the Dixie increases, typically we see downside pressure on everything else. So this is not bullish. That being said, we have seen the dollar bounce here. See that bounce started December 2023. Dollars been moving up, but so have stocks, so have crypto, so have commodities. So maybe we're seeing something different go on. Maybe we're seeing a different vibe or a different correlation, a different relationship, because this is starting to look bottom. It's starting to look very bottomish. Holding these lows, moving higher. I mean... Man, it is weird to see the dollar move like this, but then simultaneously, gold. Ooh. Ooh. Gold did close last week at an all-time high. Of course, didn't move over the weekend. Literally today, I didn't catch this. Finally. Finally. Finally, gold moves to any extension. Holy, holy smokers. We had a lot of confluence in this 2,260 area. Today's high wick on gold with strength on the dollar. It's a weird setup. Weird setup. We might see gold chill out for the week though. Uh, I've never seen a hidden extension target ever in my observation really of gold because it doesn't tend to move. But gold looks bullish AF. I think gold is going to put on more gains this year than it maybe ever has. <laughs> maybe it ever has in a year. But for gold, like that could be like 20%. It could be like 10%. But it is weird to see gold and the dollar both showing strength. It's uncomfortable. But I'll chill with it. I'll let it ride. Let's see. Bitcoin not doing anything, still painting that bottom. It is starting to look more like a bear flag. That would be fine because the position or trade we were looking at hypothetically in this live stream is lower to fill. So we'll, we'll let the timer go on that. What's up, One Way Tunes? How you doing, bro? It's good to see new people joining the crew right here. Join. Good to see you. Be like them. What else are we looking at today, fam? Go gold. Ondo. Yeah, I got an alert for Ondo. I'll pull up Ondo. Ondo hit a dollar. I don't know if it broke it, though. Top G. What's up, man? What's up, Embads? Thank you. I am a top G. Ondo hit that dollar. Getting smacked down. What's up, Andrew? Owned wants to look at Matic. We can look at Matic. What's up, uh, Stone? You're over there on the mobile stream. Put the guns away. Not a chance, bro. This is America. In America, we don't put our guns away. Benja, what program am I using? What do you mean by that? For the charts? For the charts or for what? Trading view is the is the charts. Links right there. TomCrown.io slash trading view. Do I know why the deep sea is so dark, Vincent? Because light diffu dis diffuses into water as it goes deeper and then eventually there's no light penetrating from the surface. Roughly, roughly, as the light red shifts. Uh, Ondo, Ondo hit both a dollar and our top trend here. Very nice move, actually. Very nice move. I knew it would hit a dollar. <laughs> That's a pretty savage rejection, though. Um, unless Ondo really just like snipes 83 cents, then wicks back up today. I'd be looking down here at the 75 cent mark. Like we talked about in previous analysis of Ondo, I feel much better down at 50 cents. I don't like up here 
despite people kind of wanting me to say that when we looked at it. If you don't have the patience for 50 and it may not come, 75 cents does look pretty loaded, looks pretty locked. We haven't quite broken our structure here and that could mean it will take longer. Yeah, I like that right there. Measured move, actually a little bit lower than 75, maybe 70 to fill the fair value gap. I don't like it at 75, but I think a trade could be taken there. Let's do it like this. Just back to a dollar. Son of a bee. Boom. Like that. 4.2 to 1 from 40 cents looking for a dollar. I think that's a pretty clean trade. No guarantee that it comes. Of course, scalper probably going to look for a trade like this just underneath March's low, the wick. And basically what you're doing here is you'd be looking for a stop hunt play, very short term trade, not one that I would take. This looks very, very sketchy, very sketch. 83 two. Right there. Hmm. Kind of like this, too. Hold up. I like that better. I like that better. I'm going to leave it like that. Real quick, let me use my object tree. If you don't use the object tree and you've been trading on TradingView, it's, it's time to upgrade your game, guys. It's time to, to get better at this. We do have a video. It's the support and resistance video in the number one free trading course on YouTube. You can check it out, learn how to use the object tree. Get good. Just get, You'll get good. There we go. Hiding them just because these things are way too visually encumbering but they're there. They're there. I'm going to place an alert down here in Ondo. 70 cents looks pretty nice. Of course, we have the scalp set up as well. Lots of different different ways to play this. I'm probably not going to take any of them. I don't know what this thing is, but that doesn't mean you can't. Bitcoin's still trading sideways. Actually, I'm going to go through some of these alerts. Why is Musk hating on Dodge? Is he? Is Musk now hating on Doge? What In what capacity? I wasn't convinced that Elon understood crypto at all when he started talking in 2021. I wasn't convinced at all. Looking at uh, some traditional, traditional markets here, Reddit's IPO under its opening trading price, 51.70 a share, now down to 70 or 45, which is not a big move versus last week, but it is an important break of this market structure. It has traded to a new low into a new month. Not a good look. Not a good look. Using our FIB tools if we want to get some doom targets. 32, 32.90, great place to look for a bounce if this just kind of craps the bed as most IPOs tend to do. Our 1618 extension right there at 32.9 and our two measured move at 27. 27.11. It's a pretty number. Let's see something like this. Manages to catch bids. It doesn't look very good. Something tells me it's actually going to do this. I don't think it's going to nuke. I think it's going to hit some kind of low. It's going to sweep long liquidity here. Maybe 40 flat. And then I think I bet we get something like this back to 56. And if that low is then broken, that's when these lower targets get on the table. That would be a very beautiful play. Let's see what this looks like. I don't have a good way to kind of guess where it might bounce though, other than the 1618. If it doesn't, it does nuke here, then we probably come back to test this. That would be ugly. Something like that. Reddit IPO struggle bus. But what IPOs don't? Speaking of struggle bus, unfortunately, I know the <clears throat> some of you aren't going to like to hear this, but I don't care. Get over it. DJ T also known as Trump Media and Technology Group Corp, also IPO'd last week, and that's why we're looking at both of them. 
opened its trading at $70.86, much higher than the company was trading a pre-public offering. Wow, it has taken a hit today. From $70, it is now down to $46, which is weird because it's within a dollar of Reddit's price now. Down 35-ish percent after trading to 80 on the opening day. It's filled the gap. Man, not the best look. Not quite doomish, but not the best look. At the moment, you could argue this is previous resistance that was broken, and now it has tested support. But if you're arguing that, you really need to see it bounce soon. It really needs to bounce soon. Here's a little bit of hopium for your cup or for your pipe. Boom. 45, 45, we'll call it, is the 618, is the golden Fibonacci retracement level where we see the most confident bounces happen to the upside and downside. There's your hopium. In fact, I would say this really should hold that level or stuff is going to get ugly. If it loses 32.10, it's in rug territory. Be looking at like 18, maybe even 12, looking low. But that's not on the table yet. That's not where we're at. Let's see this. Last thing's 84, maybe 100 for the measured move. I'm going to have to wait. I'm going to have to wait. We're right at previous resistance. We could be looking at an SR flip. I can't, I can't go in all good conscience without seeing this resolve. Could say if we bounce here, 60 bucks. If we see the rest of the market or even just this bounce, if you're looking at like 60, but this is very dangerous looking, <laughs> very dangerous looking. I'll keep tabs on it. Got my alerts set. What else moved that we want to just look at here? DGB, not just for Sharknado, but because it genuinely is doing something now. Digibyte, a coin many of you are probably not familiar with unless you've been around in the space a while. Wow. DGB moved in April. Let's go. All right. All right. All right. Wasting no time, Digibyte moving back cutting through the inefficiency that it has painted on its chart. That was from 1.2 to 2.1 cents. We can see right here over the course of four or five months, efficiency being painted on the chart, meaning price moving up and down, distributing supply, not just going down or going up. Efficient price action. In the first 18 hours of this new quarter, Digibyte has tested that uh, previous support as resistance. It has moved back. We'll zoom in a little bit here, but you see this moving as high as 3.2 cents in April, potentially. Lots of coins that have breached this mark have gone on to move and fill in that efficiency rather quickly, honestly. Kind of surprising to see this already move in April. Looks like our Digibyte trade, that's money in the bank, 78% gain. If you didn't see this trade, you probably don't watch the stream that much, but it's a reason to tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And to join the Discord, all of my trades are posted to the exclusive VIP trade rooms that you'll get free access to. All you have to do is sign up with one of our partners. Boom, that's a nice trade. Great take profit. Weekly kind of looks set up to go. Weekly looks pretty good. Nice. Well, hell yeah, Sharknado. Hell yeah. Daily Beaston. This is, man, this is looking very good. This gets me a little excited. Wow. Is it going to fill the wick? Fill the wick. Fill the wick. That is not bad, dude. About time, Digibyte. About time, my friend. I've been holding you for like seven years. I don't even know how long. About time. What I like about this is the quickness in this new month that it's moved, but also 
on a daily time frame, broke its previous monthly, back tested it, moved higher. That's clean. The issue is that you've already tested this monthly. And so we typically look for an entry there, even if we're all the way up here. That's not really the case here though, because on a retest, this looks really bad all of a sudden. You don't want to come back down. You want to keep setting higher lows. So an entry here is going to be tricky. I think the only logical spot, even though I don't feel confident enough in it, is right back here at your highs, at your daily highs, 1.6 cents. This is a higher risk position. You don't have really the confluence or the higher time frame agreement for support there, but that's the only way I think I could play it. I'm going to actually not place the trade on the chart. We're going to leave it here. Beautiful 80% gain. I'm not going to ruin it. Digibyte. Well done. Well done. I know people want to look at Doge. We're going to look at Doge. We should probably pull up Ethereum. We should probably pull up the big hitters. What do you guys think? Doge looks beautiful, guys. Guys, this looks beautiful. Look at this. Accumulation above previous resistance. Beautiful. It's bonita. It's bonita. Let's look at the quarter here on Doge as these new candles just painted. Beautiful quarter. Absolutely stunning. However, not at a new quarter close high. That number is no surprise to fans of this channel. 25 cents, the only number we've been talking about on Doge for a while. 25 cents. That's the price to beat. It's going to be a rough one. This comes from many months of very efficient distribution before the bear market, acting as resistance and a psychological number. But the good news is if Doge can get above 25 cents, if it can hold that, I believe it goes back to its all-time high. I believe it breaks its all-time high rather quickly. Kind of a waiting game. A little bit of a waiting game on Doge. Monthly still coming up. Not bad RSI, fine condition for where it's at. Money flow looking good on the week. Uh, you already back tested your order block. Not a lot of opportunity here, not a lot of uh, entry. That is always a spicy setup. Maybe 18.3. I don't like it. I don't like it as an entry. 12, uh, 12.7 to 13.7 was it. That was it, boys. For the degenerates, I mean, maybe try to scalp from 18, 18 1 to the 25, 27 zone. I don't like this trade. Not something I would take. Let's try it like this. There we go. Something like that. It looks good. I like where it's at. I like this. You can go as low as 18, but going lower can get weird fast. I'm still looking for 25. I think we hit it this month. Pretty good confidence. Is there anything I really wanted to cover? I want to I want to see what you guys are looking at today still, but I want to look at a few of these alerts we've gotten. BCH, we had an amazing call on Bitcoin Cash looking for 750-ish back on the what was it? The 24th 24th of March. It has hit our 1618. It has responded to that extension right in here, right now, at the previous daily order block. Potentially a spot for a position. Really chasing it up, though. If there's another chance at 500, I think that that makes much more sense. But if you're a degenerate, as I know you are, we could look, honestly, where price is right now, 620. A little bit of patience down at 600 might be rewarded as well. Just like that. Nice 5 to 1. Beautiful. 34% reward, 6% risked right at the day. I mean, these are, that's it. It's interesting. There's a lot of kind of potential setups building across the space right now. Where are my headphones go? Ah, all right. BCH. Looking good. Looking good. Feeling good. Okay, those are pretty much all the ones I want to look at today. 
Bitcoin has not moved. All right. What's chat up to? What are you up to, fam? How many likes do we have? Got almost 200 viewing on the short stream with 64 likes. Those are kind of rookie numbers, but shout out to you guys. Yeah, only 600. Man, only 600 live viewers. Only 375 likes. Not a spicy Monday, I suppose. That's okay. That's okay. We got all of the best people here today. Best people in crypto in this room right now. Love every single one of you. What should you do with your life? Three, four, seven. You should pursue happiness, my friend. That's the only thing you should do. Litecoin Joe, can we look at Litecoin? I forgot about it. I'm so used to Litecoin not doing anything that it's like not in the checklist in my head. Litecoin was looking freaking great at the end. What was this? I, yeah, at the into the end of uh, the quarter, it did break to a new high, hundred twelve dollars. Before now, kind of rejecting from that level. Could see a trade here. Could see a trade at a hundred bucks. Hmm. You just need to close above a hundred. 108. Son of a bitch. I'm very bullish on Litecoin. Don't love that. Other closes. Man. This was so hype yesterday. So hype. Quarter, month is all closing. Everything looked good. And then it just, I was like, nah. No, thank you. That's okay. It's, it will still have its time. Another lower quarterly close. Man. That's a good news. I don't think Litecoin will trade below $70 again. It's like $50, $40, $50, $60. I don't think it'll close. I don't think it'll trade below $70 again. Ah, man. Damn it, Litecoin. Damn it, Bobby. It's okay. In your, you'll, you'll have your time. In your time. Not the greatest close on the month, but some nice, refreshing price action at the end of that month. Weekly does have a good amount of room, down to about $90. Even at 90 that could be a good entry. 85 Man. Daily's still beasting. Hmm. Maybe we're getting a little false signal here to open the month. RSI high is coming down. Not what I want to see. With higher closes, not what I want to see. Uh, I think Litecoin needs to bounce at about 90 here on the shorter term, like this week. And I think it needs to break its high. I need to see a candle close above 110. Close above 110, then all of a sudden you're unlocking so much potential upside. You can see over the course of two years, Litecoin has been painting higher lows. It has been repeatedly testing resistance at $100 over and over and over and over again. Eating away at it. It's going to break to the upside at some point. When it does, it's going to go right back to the all-time high. But man, any day now, Litecoin, any day, I'm waiting for you. I really hope today kind of settles up different because... It, everything's looking good and then this daily candle is a little ugly mm. see this quarter higher high first higher high already I guess in April on the month for Litecoin against Bitcoin in how long over a year someday baby love you Litecoin I haven't lost faith I watch you every day on my own time. Bitcoin has moved 0% today during the live stream, but that does kind of line up for me as short-term reversal. Low accumulation. Our trade remains the same. ICP chart, you know what we should do? This is what we should do. We should pull up our coin gecko, see what's moving, see what the big guys are P trending. I don't know how honestly accurate this is. Prop base. Never heard anyone talk about it. Cat coin. Someone asked about that on Friday. Constellation. Largest gainers. Core. What is core? Biggest gainers is core. I guess we should open core. 
Yeah, someone said I never look at Tau. Here, I'll pull it up for you. There you go. Someone said I never look at it. That's because I guess it just filled our trade. After getting us wrecked last time. Just filled our trade at 480. At least back to 620 looks pretty good. Surprise didn't hit $800 though. Tau holding on here. I need to see a bounce. What was... Uh, I have a core chart. I don't even have a core chart. I'll have to make one. Tia looking honestly just like Tau, weirdly here. Not a great setup. Not a great move going on. Uh, do not break 1150, Tia. You break 1150, you look like garbage. You look like the start of a bear market. I have to make a new chart. Core. Core, core, core. Burr, 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 burr. We need, you know what this channel needs? It needs more air horns. I've noticed it just doesn't have enough air horns and, you know. It's probably why we only have 100,000 subscribers and not a million. Distinct lack of air horns and obnoxious noises. Core looks like it's getting close to that all time high from just last year. Is that the, that doesn't seem like the whole history to me. Could be. Seavolt. This is not Seavolt Finance. Whatever Seavolt Finance is, though, holy shit, that thing has never moved. Where was this traded first? It was traded on Pith. Interesting. I'm just going to use Bybit's chart because I cannot find a longer one. Well, damn, Core, I guess uh, you're going places, buddy. Okay, just get rid of my fib then. That's cool. Previous all-time high is $5. Definitely going to find some resistance there. Currently at three fifty. Breaking your all-time high, you can start targeting $28. I'd say like $25. $25 to your one six one eight. That's very nice. Not a lot of support built underneath you. Core is really experiencing... Very inefficient price action. This reminds me of ICP, honestly. On the month for like a year. And now just experiencing moving back through that inefficiency. $5 mark will be a hurdle. Definitely will be a roadblock. If it can make it above, things look pretty good. But it, it honestly just looks like complete inefficiency on the left side. And now again, complete inefficiency. Not building any significant resistance on the way down, nor building any significant support on the way up. This is not my favorite chart to TA. The only support you can even like find like a dollar, maybe a dollar, 75 cents. This is a, a flying knife. Man. There, there's going to be no more analysis really that can be done here. You can't really analyze this. 85% daily yesterday, 37% daily today. If you're in a position, I would come, I, if I was in a position, I would look to take some profit of five bucks, leave some to ride. But man, this could go very up or very down very quickly. Very, very quickly. What's up, Chad? Subscribe two minutes ago. You're Chad. Douglas Young. What's up, brother? My friend. Good to see you. DJ Howie. Pred Alien. Watch out for that guy. Fred Alien subscribed. Uh, David Elliott Kingdom Renovations. What's up? Full Tech Ahead. Eddie G. Fun in the Sun. Villa Clips. Siraj. Tom Snyder. Great name. Great name. Steve Schwago. Signal to Forex. Great names. Wonderful names. We have blown through 100,000 subscribers because of our awesome community. We are almost to 103,000. Even though I think we only hit 100,000 like a, 10 days ago. 102,732 subscribers right now. It'd be awesome if we get to 103 today. But it's not the biggest stream day. So it seems. So it seems, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Is what it is. Been live an hour and a half. That's about... It's, it's getting on there. It's getting on in the time. What's up, Rob? What is my top Litecoin price for this bull run? I ain't afraid of some moon math. 
I ain't afraid of no moon math. Let's look. Why can't I do this? Is it these? There we go. There we go. What's my top Litecoin? What is the most moony of moon maths that can be done? All we have to do, take out our fib tool. When in doubt, fib it out. Great video on fib in the playlist. Connect your highs to your lows, your bull market highs to your bear market lows. And then just look at the extensions. Here we go. 420, the best number. Seems I mean, like um, the probability of hitting 420 again is incredibly high. Breaking the previous all-time high. Using our fib tool. We get about, what, 1750 to 2500. Our measured move, 8,000. I would say 8,000. I'm not saying 8,000 is coming, but 8,000 is the moon target, right? That's like the moon target. The best conditions, best scenario, yeah, like 8K. If we look at the Litecoin Bitcoin pair and do it a different way, we can say, all right, right now, it is a, 1600% gain back to Litecoin's all-time high valuation against Bitcoin. So we can also try it this way and say right now, what is 17, 1600%, 1750 right at the first, 1618, there you go. They're all beautiful targets. No one knows the future, but FIBs are probably the best way at trying to look at the future. Ravencoin had a big move. Let me see. Ravencoin, uh, maybe looking for three and a half cents for entry. Hit resistance. Looks good. Bitcoin finally, finally, finally sensing me getting a little tired and making ever so slightly a move up. I'm looking for just above 70K today. Hopefully not rejecting there. Hopefully continuing. How, must, how high must Bitcoin go to afford a shirt? Oh, uh, buddy, I don't know, man. Shirts are expensive these days. You silly sausage. You remember when uh, you joined and we had 4,000 subs? That's right, makers. It's been a long journey, bro. Moon math. What is happening? Not 20. I don't know, man. Nothing. Nothing's happening. Keep spamming, Sharknado. Apparently, you don't pay attention because we already did it. Pay attention, dude. You say this on repeat. Well, I don't know, dude. Maybe maybe saying it on repeat isn't working. Maybe that's not being such a successful strategy. Maybe you should mix your strategy up. Wow. Maddox stopped out our long. Dang, lower high and now it's back to the low. Sure. Shibble. That's not great. That's not great. What are you doing, Maddox? What are you doing? Matic trades below last month's low, which it's pretty close, 91 cents. I'm not going to say I think this is happening yet, but if it does, why? What, what is going on with Matic? If it breaks last month's low, you're looking at 78 cents again. It doesn't really line up with like any other chart. So many charts had the same setup. None of them did this. What's going on with Matic? I wonder if there's something, something weird going on. Some behind the scenes. And close high. Jeez. This is not a good... This just doesn't look good, man. It's like a head and shoulders hard. Um, I still would not like get bearish on it yet. It's still holding that low. Just pay. I would keep a close eye. If I had a big position on this, I don't. I wouldn't feel comfortable opening leverage on this on this chart. I don't. I don't. I don't feel comfortable with it. I don't like that pattern. Look, we looked at Matic. All you had to do was spam. It's not the way we do things. <sighs> Shout out to our sponsor, Lux Algo. Lux Algo is, is the Chad. They are the best indicator company in the world. And they help support this channel. I was trying to pull up their webpage, but it's taking, it's not working for me. There you go. 
They have a great webpage. Check them out. Links in the video description. Great partners. Uh, if you haven't subscribed and liked, definitely do so. We're going to be live again sooner than you know. Jump in the Discord, discord.gg slash Tom Crown for more and to keep up with our live streams. Appreciate you guys. It's Monday. It's April Fool's Day. Go back and watch the beginning of this stream. The beginning of this stream, if you just tuned in, all the alpha, all the info. The rest of it has just been me kind of getting over my Easter wine hangover and looking at charts. But we're going to be live soon again. But we are done for today. Thanks for joining. Love you all, guys. Check out crownanalysis.com for that market update in full in text. It's worth the read. Shout out to Mr. Poppy. Love you, fam. Till next time.